Hi, it's Alina here from Eximate Mastery. I'd like to talk about how to change your price list pricing in today's video. So we've been talking recently about how you can change labor or materials when they skyrocket in cat events. Also, we've talked about how to change the components so we can get down to the roofing nail, down to the step flashing piece, and change the material uh, line item pricing if needed. Today, let's look at the price list as a whole because what we've been talking about would be on each single individual estimate. With a price list, we can change it across the board so you do one price change and then you're set for the whole month. So let me show you how this works and we're going to take a look at how we can change our price list. In order to change our price list, you have to locate where the price list reside. So I'm here in the main portion of Xactimate under the Control Center dashboard, as you can see, which is, acts like our home screen. I'm going to go to the next tab over next to Control Center. So the next main tab over is Projects. Then you've got a main tab that says Price List, and that's what we're going to look at today. I'm going to pull up the Minnesota price list because I was just working with these. And I have noticed that the labor rates are a little bit low for this price list for October. Now this is just a sample scenario. This isn't, I don't want you guys in Minnesota to go changing your labor rates just because I said they had risen. So this is just an example, if you will. But let's say that for October they've risen $20 a square for replacement. I'm going to go ahead and right click and duplicate the price list. There's many reasons to do this. One of the main ones is you can make changes here in a duplicate S, uh, price list that um, you cannot do in an Xactware read only price list. So as you can see here, it says type Xactware read only. So no changes can be made typically to read only files and that's the same case here. So in order to make changes we do have to duplicate. There's some other reasons, you know, you do, you always want to back up of the ex normal Xactware price list just in case something goes wrong with the the uh, with what you're doing with your changes. So it's always good to duplicate and I just do an underscore and a two for the price list name. And then if you wanted to assign it to a certain uh, profile, you can. I want it to be for all profiles. And you could, if you wanted to, you know, select categories, uh, specific items, if that's what you want to do. I just copy all and left click OK and let the, it do its thing. Now once it's duplicated, you can actually double click to open up the price list. And you have a nice little price list editor here. I like to go to the components and look at the material and labor. So I can click on labor here and search for RFG. This is going to be for the labor per hour. Um, you can also go down here and search for the items that are using the component RFG. I actually prefer to do that down here. I'm going to go to the line item level down below. So I'm going to go ahead and put in RFG 300, double click on that to open it up. I'm going to go down to the retail labor here and you can change the market conditions at this level. So if you've ever opened up the pricing on a line item, this will look similar, similar to you. It has the material, equipment, retail labor and market conditions. You've also got the uh, replace and remove up above. So pay attention to that. And uh, you've got some other options here. So for the replacement pricing, I wanted to add $20 for the market conditions because the labor rates have risen at $20. And if I save and exit that and go and write an estimate with this price list assigned to it, it'll now show that labor rate market condition with the $20 added. In fact, we can go ahead and do that. I can open up an estimate here. And we can assign that price list. And it's going to do a reprice because I already had the other Minnesota one added. Let's go over here and add the RFG 300. Now in this estimate, it's one of my W estimates, uh, I did have the 3 tab, but I did not have the RFG 300. So let's go ahead and change this to RFG 300 just for sake of example so we can see our labor rates. I'm going to go over to the unit price here, click on the little I, and there you'll see my market conditions did stick and that $20 is for the increase in the retail labor. So it did work. My saved price list did succeed in changing the price. And you can do this, of course, for all the other components too. So not just labor, you've got material, access to change materials and other things if you need to. 
But market conditions is the easiest way to just go ahead and throw in there uh, the difference in pricing. So if my shingles had also risen in price, let's say $15 per square or what have you, I could change that maybe out in the price list, put in $35. So $20 for labor, $15 for the increase in the shingle price. So I like the market conditions area. It just seems easier rather than having to get into each nitinoid little material. Just have a average place where you can put market conditions and put in an amount there and that will carry across the price list. Whatever estimate that you assign your new price list to, it's going to go ahead and affect the pricing. So that is how you edit a price list and change the market conditions area if needed. If you're dealing with a cat situation or scarce labor in your area, it's nice to be able to just save it at the price list level instead of having to make these changes to each and every single separate estimate. I hope this topic is useful to you. If you liked this video, please be sure to press like below. Also subscribe for weekly updates. I update usually on a weekly basis. You'll get a new video here on this channel. If you want more information on what we do, I train contractors how to use Xactimate, you can visit www.x8mastery.com. Hope you guys stay safe out there and have a great week in your business and we'll see you next week.